Greetings and salutations, it's me, Colin Moriarty. Welcome to SideQuest's YouTube channel here on Colin's Last Stand. Today I wanted to do a Let's Play for Super Mario World, one of my very favorite games of all time. Arguably the best Super Nintendo game, certainly one of the best Super Nintendo games ever created. And, well, it's just something that I wanted to celebrate, particularly because of two reasons. First of all, uh, for the much of December I'm going to be away. I'm going to see my family finally taking a few days off to go see my family out east, so I'm not going to be able to produce any content for a little while. Which is unfortunate, that's not going to interrupt my podcasts, Sacred Symbols, a PlayStation podcast, Fireside Chats, and Knockback, because those have been recorded and are ready to go, but it's going to cause me to not be able to do, you know, a normal episode of Side Quest really until late in December. So, instead of letting the channel just publish Sacred Symbols and a couple of other odds and ends, I thought I'd do a few weeks of Let's Plays. And the second reason that I mentioned earlier that I think this is important is because Nintendo has recently lifted its sort of ridiculous little ban, or whatever you might want to call it, on... Let's Plays for, you know, Nintendo games, Nintendo-centric games. So, sorry, I'm, like, having a hard time talking and playing right now for some reason. And so, these kinds of things necessarily would get copyright strikes back in the day, and it's not really worth doing, and you don't want to get in trouble and stuff like that. But now Nintendo has lifted that ban and kind of welcomed this kind of content more, and so it lets me go back and play some of the classics that I really enjoyed as a kid. And so... I don't know. I have no agenda. I just really wanted to play the game, enjoy, talk to you guys. And this one's going to go up third in the row of three Let's Plays that I've done. So you can go check out the Let's Play I did for Mario 3 and the Let's Play I did for NES's Ninja Gaiden as well, if you're interested. But I think out of the three games that I'm doing Let's Plays for this little round here, this little mini round, I think this is my favorite game of the bunch for sure. And I would probably put Mario World certainly in my top 10 games of all time. But if not top 10, maybe even top 5. But I think that's probably pushing it certainly in the top 10. So as you guys know, Super Mario World is a Super Nintendo launch game, or was a Super Nintendo launch game, and it's really kind of a riff and an iteration on, in a lot of different ways, Super Mario Bros. 3, which is one of the great NES games of all time. It gives us an overworld and a little bit of a non-linear slant, but there are a lot more secrets tucked away in Super Mario World than, that, than there are in Super Mario 3, and so, I don't know, I mean, this is kind of just a game that you can play endlessly as much as you really want to your heart's desire, to your heart's content. It's just... It's just a lot of fun, and it never really gets old. At least in my opinion. So we're collecting coins. There's something so satisfying about this part. And I can't really hear the game, but... You know, the music is blaring, and I hope you guys are enjoying it. Good soundtrack here. I try not to let the sound bleed into the audio, which is why I don't have it here. So one of the cool things that this game adds that the others don't, and that gives it... Not only replay value, but I think non-linearity and a little bit of agency are these switches that you find throughout the game. There are four of them, and every time you find one of these colored switches, as you can see, it kind of proliferates that color switch around the various worlds. And it gives you access, basically, to places you otherwise wouldn't have been able to access, which is really cool. You can go through much of the game without doing that, but obviously you want to get that out of the way right away. And as the colors go from green, red, and blue later on, they get harder to find and more important to find if you want to 100% the game. Oh, that was terrible. So hopefully I don't have another meltdown like I did during my Super Mario Bros. 3 Let's Play that some of you might have seen, where we were having a good time until we weren't anymore, until I was playing terribly. It's always fun to go back and play these games, though, because they fit, like, you know, like a familiar piece of clothing, like an old glove. And here we have Yoshi. Of course, this is Yoshi's first appearance in Mario. And it's amazing how old this game is getting. This game came out in 90, in Japan, 91, I believe, in the United States launch game. Obviously for Super Nintendo. I had Super Nintendo at launch, so it's amazing that for 27 of my years, basically, I've been playing this game and having a great time with it. And it truly is a special game and a beautiful game, I think, too. I think it's still an incredible, incredibly beautiful game from an aesthetic point of view. Its pixel art is gorgeous. And when you really compare and contrast it to what came before it, this was really quite, quite a mind-blowing experience for us in the early 90s. Good, not great, on that little jump. Look at Yoshi, he's so cute. So I think my timing has this Let's Play going up right before Christmas, so I'm sure a lot of you guys are getting pretty excited about what Santa is going to leave under your tree, if you celebrate Christmas. If not, maybe you're excited for Hanukkah or something else. I always loved this time of year, not only for the off time that it would typically generate if you had a normal office job or went to school. I used to have an, I used to go to school, obviously. I went to college and high school and middle school and all that, but also worked a normal corporate job at one point. And this was always a time everyone looked forward to because you can get out for a little while. Now that I own a business, there really is no 
getting away from everything for an extended period of time. Although that's what I am trying to do here in December, going to see the family. Required a lot of backfilling though, man. Like backfilling the content can be really tough when you're trying to keep your mind in the game of what's going on this week or next week. And you got to think a few weeks ahead. Tough to do when you're all by yourself. But the fun thing is, is that Colin's last stand is growing and I want it to grow even more. And I'm looking to hire, I think soon it might, or the post might already be up, but if not, it'll be up soon. Looking to maybe hire a little bit of help for production. In terms of editing and whatnot, I'm basically looking to entrust someone with sacred symbols and knockback pretty much entirely to edit. That'll free me up to be more creative, perhaps do more shows like this, more Let's Plays, more whatever, which I think could be an exciting opportunity for the channel. An exciting opportunity for all of us to spend more time together as well. And hey, by the way, if you listen to the Thanksgiving-themed Let's Play that I did last month in November, which was for Mega Man 3 and basically an hour-long Let's Play from front to back of that game as I showed thanks for all the things that... I was grateful for in my life, instead of being so negative, we're always so negative on the internet. I don't want to contribute to it anymore. I appreciate everyone's kind, kind words on that. That was kind of just a let's play that I put out into the wild. I just wanted to have some fun. I didn't know if anyone would receive it or care about it, but it seemed to put people in good spirits, and I'm happy to hear that, because I am trying to put positivity out into the world as much as I can. We're always going to keep it real. We're always going to be honest and candid with each other, but I do think we can do better, all of us, collectively, certainly me, and I'm sure a lot of you as well in your different interactions online, and maybe even in your regular world with being positive so i'm trying to do more of that on this channel trying to be fair and objective and certainly it's an objective fact once more that this is one of the great games of all time and i'm glad to say although i think i'm about to jinx myself i'm glad oh see look oh the slowdown's terrible i'm glad to say that i'm playing at least a little more capably than i was mario 3 although it's been actually probably even longer since I played this game, I played it only very briefly when I got the Super NES Classic. By the way, I'm playing this on SNES Classic, but you have all sorts of options to play the game. You can play it on the original Super Nintendo. You can play it on Virtual Console on various consoles. You can play it on Wii, Wii U. I don't know if it's available on Switch. Is the Switch Virtual Console thing all straightened out yet? I don't really even pay attention to that. I've played my Switch like once this year, I think. I had an early copy of Bloodstained... Cir what is it? Bloodstained, not not Circle of the Moon, but whatever the copy of Castlevania 3 was that came out earlier. I can't keep all the track of all these copy names. But anyway, that's the last time I played Switch because I got an early copy from a friend of mine at any creates. But otherwise, I've not played Switch at all this year. I'm looking at it right now. It's unplugged sitting next to my TV. Nothing wrong with it. People are enjoying it, selling very prolifically. I think that new Pokemon game, Pokemon Eevee and Pokemon, what is it? Pokemon Let's Go Eevee, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu or something like that. I think it's selling pretty well. I bought a copy for my nephew, Dagan's son for Christmas and I, I didn't know which one to go with I was a little confused am I going to go with the Eevee one am I going to go with the Pikachu one I felt like I don't know I wanted to go let, let me give you an example let me tell, take you on a little ride so a little a little anecdote for you when I was younger in like the late 90s and Pokemon Red and Blue came out my friend Cody and I wanted to get Pokemon and I we both wanted the blue version and I had assumed that more people would want the blue version than the red version because I just feel like blue is a cooler color than red and more of a boyish color, and I assumed that they, maybe the game appealed to or appeals to boys more. So I felt like that was the more common one. And so ever since then, I got red, my friend Cody got blue, and ever since then, I always got the color that I didn't really want. So like with gold and silver, I wanted gold, but I ended up with silver, etc. and so on. Ruby and sapphire ended up with ruby, even though I really wanted sapphire. I'm always t trying to take the hit for the team. But anyway, for my nephew Graydon, I ended up getting him the Eevee one because I felt like the Pikachu one was probably the one more people were going to go for. And so I, I didn't want to be, you know, too overzealous. I wanted to give him the one that maybe had the, oops, maybe had the best chance of being different than maybe his friends are going to use. But it's not a mainline Pokemon game, so I don't, I, I personally don't find it all that exciting. That boss battle took a little long. Let's be honest with each other. It took a little too long for me to do that. But so far, so good. Dagan's daughter, Lilia, who's older than Graydon, he has a daughter and a son. She's really into manga and, like, anime and stuff like that, so I got her a bunch of manga books. I don't know anything about any of these. I basically just solicited information from Dagan about what to get, so hopefully she likes those. It's fun to buy my nieces and nephews. I have six nieces and nephews. It's fun to buy them nerdy gifts and just kind of inject that into their lives as much as possible. Like, my sister Dana has three boys, and so I bought them PS3, I bought them PS4, I bought them Switch. So it's, it's fun to be able to provide those things for them. Not too much gaming stuff for them this year, though, I think. I think I got the middle son, Finley. I think I got him Spyro, the Spyro Reignited trilogy, which I'm enjoying. I have Platinum Spyro 1 and 2 on PS4. I'm working on 3 right now. It's fun. It's like a game. I'm not even paying attention to the story at all. I have no idea what's really even going on. 
I just skip through the cutscenes. I don't care. There's just something very relaxing about it. Like, I just enjoy playing it while I'm listening to podcasts. You know, not really doing much of anything. Watching football. It's a great time waster. And there's something very satisfying about it. It's, there's obviously something very old school about the collectathon. But it doesn't usually satiate me. Like, I downloaded that game. I bought and downloaded that game last year. What was it? A Hat in Time? Or whatever it was called. And it was fine, but I didn't really dig it that much. And I heard, you know, Snake Pass is supposed to be pretty good in that respect. And I also heard that that game Ukulele, which was supposed to kind of scratch that itch as well, I heard that it wasn't very good. Which is a little disappointing when you think about it. You know? Like... That game had a lot of promise, and apparently it's just not, it doesn't live up to it. But maybe, maybe, maybe I would like it if I tried it. I'll wait, maybe I'll buy it on like a flash sale on PSN at some point. Or maybe I already own it, I don't know. I bought, it's kind of fun not being super in the industry anymore like I was at IGN, and even to an extent it's kind of funny because I don't have to play as many games. I can play really more what I want as opposed to like what I feel like I need to play. And so the downside of that, in a way, I guess, is that I just don't get everything for free anymore like I get games if I ask for them but I used to just get games sent to me and I don't really get that anymore with the exception of a few publishers which is totally fine and acceptable but it's kind of nice because I've turned into like more of a normal consumer and I've been able to relate for really the first time in my life to the especially the adage with Steam sales but I'm sure it happens on digital platforms on Xbox and PlayStation and Nintendo as well where there's like a really crazy sale like there was on Black Friday or back in October for Halloween and I just spend like $150 on games that I don't know that I'll ever even play and there's something satisfying about it. It makes me excited to have like a little back catalog of games to mess around with. Pathetic. That was a pathetic showing, by the way. But we're having fun. And we're just rambling on. No goal. I have no goal here as we enter the donut plains. Nowhere I really need to be right now. Nowhere I, nowhere I really want to go. Just me and you. Me and you in a microphone. A Super Nintendo classic. Mario. Yoshi. These, what are they called? The Beetle, Beetle something? I don't remember anymore. I ain't no Nintendo nerd anymore. I can't remember. Can't keep it all straight. But man, this game is nostalgic. Actually, it's funny. You know, I've lived in California for 11 and a half years now since I graduated college. And I remember the first time I came to California in 1992, spring of 1992. It was the analog days. And we had just gotten this game the year before, I think. And Super Nintendo was kind of still new in our household. And we all kind of came out to see my uncle who works as, he still actually does as an executive at FedEx, and he lived out here, I think, in Anaheim. And I remember bringing this instruction manual with me on the plane, again, in those analog days when you had nothing to do, and especially as a young kid, I couldn't imagine what I was supposed to do on that airplane in 1992. But I remember just obsessing over the instruction manual and how excited I was, even though I was in California for the first time, I was going to Disneyland, and I was having a good time seeing family and all that. I still couldn't wait to get home to play more of this game. And for some reason, it's just, these are just one of the games, I feel this way about Super Mario Galaxy to an extent too. And Super Mario 1 and Super Mario 3, even Mario 2, just timeless. Like you can just play them forever. They just, they never really get old. At least, at least they never get old for me. And it's just kind of nice to be able to play these things loosely on YouTube for the first time in a long time, or maybe even ever, maybe in the so-called modern gaming era, I guess where you're not going to get in trouble for putting this stuff up, where Nintendo's not going to copyright strike you or try to monetize your video on your behalf and take your hard-earned money away from you and stuff like that. It's kind of nice. Let's jump into the Donut Ghost House. It sounds, sounds kind of tasty and kind of sick at the same time, the Donut Ghost House. But these Ghost Houses were introduced here, kind of taking the place of Fortresses from Super Mario 3, the kind of inter interstitial stages. And these get like kind of a little zany at the end. They get a little crazy. They get a little hard to beat. And there are some secret ones. You can see one in the middle of this map on Donut Plains, but this is kind of the introductory one. And there's always like a little puzzle to figure out. And we're figuring it out. Are we not? Someone's yelling outside. I was, I'm recording this on Sunday in between, on a Sunday in between like the afternoon games here for NFL here in the, on the West Coast, we have 10, 10 a.m. games, 1 p.m. games, and then Sunday night football starts at like 525 or 515. And so I'm recording this on a Sunday in between games. And last night I was up kind of late, probably later than I should have been playing a game and listening to podcasts. And we live in like this 
you know apartment building near the beach here in Santa Monica and the we our courtyard like we have a balcony and then our court it faces like a courtyard of another apartment and they're kind of close to each other not like New York close but pr but pretty close to each other like there's space like you can easily you know talk to each other from across the way and usually our neighbors across the way are pretty quiet they just leave their door open and stuff but yesterday there was like some sort of fray at like two in the morning some sort of melee on the porch and I only heard most of it but people were like fist fighting and jostling and yelling there was girls yelling it was quite the event really and I uh, just heard that maybe maybe it's round two what I'm hearing outside it was quite unsettling to be perfectly honest oh god I think I was supposed to do something uh, there we go. I'm shocked I haven't died yet I'm sure certainly that's gonna jinx it this game is easy though I don't think anyone's gonna say that Mario 2 isn't or I'm sorry Super Mario World rather isn't easy and hey let me use this opportunity to say something else that I need to say really quick it's gonna offend some of you but Yoshi's Island, the, the second Super Mario World game from late in the Super Nintendo's life cycle, I don't like it. I don't care for it at all, actually. I don't get it. I don't understand why it's so popular. I don't know. I just, I just don't like it. And I remember when I worked at IGN, my friend Mark Ryan tried to get me to really, you know, try to change my mind on it. He gave me the, what was it, the Game Boy Micro or whatever it was. And the, I guess, Game Boy Advance version of the game. And I just sat with it for a while in bed for like a week and... I felt the same exact way that I felt about it when I was young. It's just not for me, you know? I'm just not feeling it. But we're cruising through Donut Plains. I mean, we're fucking Donut Plains up. And actually, by saying the word fuck, this might not be appropriate for Nintendo, so I am sorry if anyone's watching this from Nintendo. They want. And I'm sure they don't care. I'm sure this will not do nearly enough traffic. I'm sure that Nintendo doesn't even know I exist. I mean, I'm, I deal in the world of Sony primarily, as you guys know, these days. But you can't take away my my old school love. The things that I grew up with. Because this is this is the stuff that I grew up with. And the stuff that I obsessed with over as a kid. And, you know, it is fun. I was talking about my brother's kid just earlier. And it is fun watching him fall in love with... Oh, shit. Him fall in love with these games, too. Just like I did as a kid. Us alongside his dad. And how timeless they are. And how... I guess it's, it's kind of a nice sign that you can still find young people today i think he's in second grade you can still find young people today that would prefer to play these kinds of games like he would much rather play Mega Man or something like that although i am a little disturbed that he doesn't care much for castlevania and i feel like we have to do something about that like he's definitely missing something there that we need to help fill in and i'm gonna really make that a mission of mine as the years wear on here because i showed him i think if i remember correctly i showed him what did i show him oh Oh my god, it's all falling apart here. I showed him... I want to say Castlevania 2 or Castlevania 3. When I was hanging out with him at, at his dad's house. And he just did... I was surprised. Like, he wasn't into it. For how, as into Mega Man as he is, as in, for into Mario. I think he even is into some other, you know, old school side scrollers. This is looking pretty precarious here, by the way. Oh my god, I died for the first time. He just wasn't into it. And that, that shocked me. I don't know if it was too stiff for him. Like, if it was, like, too stiff of a game... The knockback's kind of severe. It is hard. Castlevania is hard. But I think he's into, like, Ninja Gaiden and stuff, and those games are hard, too. So I'm working on it. But he does really love these games, which is nice to see. He's getting raised right by his bro by my brother, his dad. Oh, my God. I'm, like, doing the same exact thing here. Just absolutely terrible. Ugh, I'm back in the same spot here. I gotta do something about these guys. Shit. Okay. All right. I think we're okay. I think we've made it. I made that way harder than it had to be, that's for sure. Terrible jump through that bar, too, but I had no I couldn't wait anymore. You know? It's too much. So we're at the second fortress here already, Morton's Castle. <laughs> it's so nostalgic. It's such a nostalgic game, this whole setup. Very exciting for me. Maybe not for you. Hopefully for you. So these little thwomps. See, so that yellow block there, like we were saying earlier, that wouldn't be there. There we go. If... Ooh, that was really close. If I didn't get that yellow switch before at the very beginning of the game, as you might recall. 
And there is another switch we can get in Donut World, I think, although I don't think I'm going to get it. I don't know that I'm playing as a comp completionist here. I should do another Let's Play later on where we can do it. It would be fun to just sit down and play this whole game. I kind of want to do like full Let's Plays, like full game Let's Plays of old NES games. Like it would be fun. I don't know if this would be fun for you guys, but I think it would be fun. Like I haven't played through 100% of like the original Zelda or Link to the Past in a long time. And I wrote these walkthroughs for both of them in the 90s and early 2000s. And I thought it would be fun since I don't really remember anything about how to get all of them if I was just, if I played, did Let's Plays rather, using my own guides. Or at least preparing with my own guides. I think that would be fun. A little fun full circle kind of thing for me. That would take forever probably. Probably be the longest upload I ever put up here. But you could, I mean, I could 100%. It would take you, what, a couple hours to 100% to Zelda? The original Zelda? Something like that. It wouldn't be that bad. Shit. Yeah. We'll wait for it to come back. I was saying this in an earlier Let's Play too that even though I can't hear the music because I don't want it to bleed through the microphone, that I can still kind of... What am I doing? That I can still kind of like hear... Oh yeah, that's right. Is that I can still kind of hear the music in my head. I'm a little nuts, I suppose. I guess you guys all know that already. Sometimes I feel like I go into this quiet voice when I say, like, there we go, and things like that while I'm playing, where I feel like I sound like a broke-down version of Bob Ross. Okay. Oh, no, that's not the way I want to go. And see, if I got the green block, then I would not be in danger there. But I am in danger, of course. And there would be something there for me as well. Morton, fat fuck. Come on. Oh, I just got the hitbox there. That was awesome. Like, that was pathetic. Are these guys even trying? You think Bowser would be disappointed if he knew how much of a pushover his kids were? His schmuck kids? Not doing anything to protect anything? Just letting Mario roll through? What is going on in this world? Has anyone ever stopped to really think about that? What the hell is this? This is unbelievable. I mean, I'm, it's great, but it's unbelievable. Why? How does that egg? How is that egg talking? How does that egg even know any languages? It's disturbing. All right, let's keep going. We're in the vanilla dome. Where we ought to be. I don't know what I just did that for. That didn't really make a whole lot of sense. What is... Oh, my God. This might be my cue. Because when it starts going like this, we know no good can come of it. So you can, there we go. I'm, like, playing, like, an, an annoying completionist. I just want all the coins. <laughs> Okay. And here we'd have red blocks where we can really cheat. But alas, we'll deal, we'll settle with the fire flower. Or for it. I like the fire flower. Very useful in this game. I feel like more useful in this game than in Mario 3, actually. Although, more useful than a lot of people give it credit for generally, I would say. No flip animation, though, in this, which is a little annoying. It was very cute in Mario 3. I liked that. Mario's a little more straight-laced, a little more adult in Super Mario World. Oh my god. See, now I'm just rushing. I don't even know what, like, why I did that. These little, these little Kaiser looking helmets. But fear not. We're in the same exact position we were. Don't fear. I said it. Don't do it. Don't fear. Please. Please don't fear.
Jeez. Oh my god. But you see how easy, like how, like because of the, you're able to store, actively store something as opposed to keeping it in that bar in Mario 3 that it just, it just becomes a much easier game. As we move through the vaunted vanilla dome. Now I'm going to play until I die and then we're going to wrap it up. Next time I die, that's it. It could be in one minute. It could be in an hour. I don't know. It's hard to say, but I'm going to play as hard as I can, of course. I think you can just run into that fish, can't you? Yeah. First time you ever saw Magikarp. It's not really Magikarp. Don't take me seriously. Don't get upset. Of course, fire very useful in Mario games underwater. Doesn't really make any sense like anything else in this twisted fucking world, but nonetheless. So we're cruising through. By the way, have you checked out the other Let's Plays? I know I mentioned, you know, the Ninja Gaiden one, the Mario 3 one, the Mega Man 3 one. But there are others that we've done in here. My brother and I did a couple of funny ones for some old school games that we recorded when we were together, including for the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the arcade game. And we did one for, what else did we do one for? Oh, Jackal, which is one of Dagan's favorite games. And we had a lot of fun with those. So you guys might enjoy them if you haven't checked them out yet. They're on this channel here as well. I've done one recently, or somewhat recently, for, like, Dead Cells. I did one for Dragon Quest XI. There's a few. I don't do too many. I want to do more. Because I, I'm, I'm having a hard time producing side quests more than, like, two or three times a month. I want to do it between two and four. That's kind of what I'm aiming for. Depending on, you know, what's going on that month. As opposed to every week. Because it's just not possible to do a quality show. And I want to keep the show quality and useful. I don't want to just put something up to put something up. But the Let's Play... Oh, jeez. But the Let's Plays are way easier to do. And I enjoy doing them. And they don't do great traffic. But they're fun and they're a good way for us to connect. So... You might enjoy the other Let's Plays I've done, and I'm going to try to put them up more often so that there's at least, like, one piece of non-Sacred Symbols related content on the channel most weeks. I think that would be a lot of fun. And I know that you guys have been enjoying the reviews as well, which have been a lot of fun for me to do. Jeez. Oh, no. Whew, that was close. So you can check out recent reviews I've done for, like, Red Dead Redemption 2 and Castlevania Requiem and Spider-Man, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Guacamelee 2. A lot of reviews. Detroit Become Human, God of War, Nino Kuni 2. I'm just saying, I'm just saying names now. I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. So again, I said I'm gonna play till I die, and I have not. I am not dead yet. God damn it, I am not dead yet. But I sense that it's probably coming soon. I don't even remember what to do in this ghost house. So maybe this will be the end. Who knows? So are you guys excited about Christmas, Hanukkah, etc.? Kwanzaa, whatever you might celebrate, or if you're atheist. I'm excited about it. It's a good time of year. It's a great time of year. It's time of family and friends, games, so many games to play, time off, time to read, binge watch television, go to the movies. Oh, it's, it gets, oh Jesus Christ. Like, I, I hit the biggest possible enemy of all time. What is he so afraid of? Like, I don't see him, dumb, dumb asshole. <laughs> All right, let's see. So we're avoiding these spotlights as best. Oh my God, never mind. <laughs> oh, well. I guess I'm a man of my word. That's it. That's the end. But I hope you guys enjoyed my little Let's Play here at Super Mario World. Just to keep you company while I'm gone for this holiday season. But I'll be back with more side quests and more Let's Plays. Remember that you can also tune in to Sacred Symbols on PlayStation... The Sacred Symbols, the PlayStation podcast, I'm sorry. On podcast services or here on YouTube each week. Support the show on Patreon to get it three days early and ad-free. Knockback, the Retro and Nostalgia podcast is also out there for you to listen to. And Fireside Chats, the Eclectic Interview Series. Collins Last Stands firing on all cylinders has had a great 2018. All thanks to you guys. So thank you so much for your love, your kindness, and your support. I'll see you next time for another Let's Play or another podcast, another video, whatever the case might be. Take care of yourselves and happy holidays.